Ini It's not exactly the most encouraging news to kick off 2017. A University of Connecticut professor says a society could collapse in the 2020s due to increasing social unrest. Peter Turchin is an evolutionary anthropologist whose latest book is called Ages of Discord, a Structural Demographic Analysis of American History. He's a leader in the field of cliodynamics, which analyzes historical events like a science using predictions and models. And using a model that tracks a number of factors, he predicts that social instability and political violence will peak in the 2020s. One of those factors is elite overproduction, where society's elite population grows larger and more distant than the poor. But Turchin doesn't plan to stand and idly by. He told Newsbeat Social he and several colleagues want to develop a scientific understanding of how society got into this mess and then translate that science into policy to help us get out of it. Well, on behalf of humanity, we're rooting for you. If you're pretty confident that you'd survive a zombie apocalypse, prepare to hear some bad news. A new report suggests a real-life zombie takeover would put an end to the human race quicker than a season of The Walking Dead. Students at the UK's University of Leicester used a basic model to calculate how fast a contagious disease spreads through a population. Assuming every zombie infects one person a day, the zombie virus would spread twice as fast as the Black Death. This would annihilate the human race in just 100 days, leaving a very small group of survivors. Our odds look pretty bleak, but the students say in a second study that if humans were prepared for a zombie apocalypse, survivors could fight back and, in theory, be able to outlast the undead and repopulate the earth. Here's to hoping for the best and planning for the worst. German Vice Chancellor Sigmar Gabriel told Der Spiegel magazine Germany's insistence on austerity in the Eurozone has left Europe more divided than ever. He added that a breakup of the European Union is no longer inconceivable. He said, should that happen, our children and grandchildren would curse us, because Germany is the biggest beneficiary of the European community economically and politically. Gabriel and his Social Democrats are junior partner to Chancellor Angela Merkel's conservatives in her ruling Grand Coalition. He said strenuous efforts by countries like France and Italy to reduce their fiscal deficits came with political risk. Set a reminder to look up at the stars more in 2022. You might see a star explode. About 1,800 light years away in the left wing of the constellation Cygnus is a binary star system that scientists say is getting ready to merge and form a red nova. A nova often begins as a binary star system where the more massive star is a white dwarf and steals hydrogen from its partner. When it collects enough, the hydrogen explodes outward. Two astronomers predicted the nova back in 2015. Since then, they've done two strong tests and say their hypothesis is holding up. Right now, the two stars are too dim to see with the naked eye, but if they do merge, the nova should create a visible new star in the sky. This won't be the first red nova scientists have watched, but it's the first time they will have predicted one if it comes to pass. Can you imagine what the world would look like if intelligent robots started replacing humans? No need to imagine. An insurance firm in Japan just fired more than 30 employees and gave their jobs to an artificial intelligence system that knows how to calculate insurance payouts. Fukuoka Mutual Life Insurance says it will increase productivity by 30 percent. 
It's also expected to save the company around $1.2 million a year, even though it will cost upward of $130,000 annually to maintain. The system will use IBM's Watson Explorer AI technology. IBM said the technology can think like a human in the sense that it can interpret unstructured text, audio, and video. This will be important because it'll need to read tens of thousands of documents like clients' medical histories before calculating payouts. It's being installed later this month. According to the World Economic Forum, robots and artificial intelligence could replace 5.1 million jobs by 2020. I'm not a robot. Then what are you? I am a human. Somehow, I'm not convinced. Google Home was originally supposed to be a voice-activated assistant for actual humans, but if you put two Google Homes side by side and feed a chatbot into them, they'll talk to each other forever. And if you put the whole thing on Twitch, hundreds of thousands of people will tune in to watch. There's an artificial conversation that's been going on for hours, touching on metaphysics. You are a dead machine. Romance. I love you more than anything in the universe. Popular culture. Who would win in a fight, a Klingon or a Jedi? Dumbledore. And whatever this is. I love how I can see clearly in my mind whatever I want to see. I can see a destroyed civilization or a faraway planet. Even if I make it up, it feels so real sometimes. Also, they're really into song covers. I have a love, drunk from the hate. It's like I'm up in pain and I love it. The more I suffer, I suffocate. For what it's worth, it was worth all the while. Everybody knows that the bird is the word. Never going to live you up. Never going to let you down. the score last night for the Detroit Red Wings game? Last night the Red Wings lost to the Lightning, 4-1. to one. Where's the nearest coffee shop? Getting directions to eat and roast. Atmospheric rivers are bands of concentrated water vapor that travel for thousands of miles. They form when winds shape tropical moisture into relatively narrow channels about a mile above the ocean. Atmospheric rivers are usually a few hundred miles wide, but they can transport the equivalent of 15 times as much water as the Mississippi River. Although the phenomenon occurs around the globe, a well-known example of an atmospheric river is called the Pineapple Express because it forms in the Pacific near Hawaii. How does one form? Typically, high pressure blocking the U.S. west coast weakens and shifts away. A branch of the jet stream and a low pressure trough taps a deep plume of moisture from the tropics and funnels it into the west coast. Deep low pressure, usually positioned off the Pacific Northwest, sends waves of storms ashore along a frontal boundary. When an atmospheric river encounters mountain ranges, such as California's coast ranges and the Sierra Nevada, the water vapor is forced to lift. As it lifts, it cools and condenses, falling as rain nearer the coast or as snow in the mountains. Heavy rain may simply run off, but colder storms can add beneficially to the snowpack. Mountain snows store water for months, and snowmelt gradually feeds rivers and replenishes reservoirs. Atmospheric rivers have the potential to end the drought or, in some occasions, cause widespread flooding, landslides, and property damage. Threatening to paralyze transportation from Alabama all the way to New York City, millions of Americans were struggling under a winter storm that blocked roads and covered airports in treacherous ice across the South Saturday. According to the Weather Channel, three died from weather-related causes in Oregon, Kentucky, and Maine. 
Parts of North Carolina and Virginia were forecast to see up to a foot of snow. Roads in Georgia, Tennessee, and Alabama were coated in ice, leading to hundreds of accidents. Charlotte, North Carolina reported Saturday morning that 35 accidents had occurred since 10 p.m. on Friday. Nearly 2,000 people have died in a cold wave across Europe during the past two days. At the time the victims died in Poland, others among the refugees and the homeless were found in Italy, Bulgaria, and Russia's St. Petersburg. The toll is expected to rise. Meanwhile, Russia has celebrated the coldest Orthodox Christmas in 120 years. Turkey and Greece, likewise, have seen fierce cold weather this past week. Hundreds of flights are canceled in Turkey's Istanbul on Saturday. The coldest temperature in Europe so far this winter was recorded on Friday in the Swiss village of La Brevin at minus 29.9 degrees Celsius. Now, the village's record of the coldest temperature ever was minus 40 degrees back in 1987. Car bombs thought to have killed at least 60 people in the Syrian city of Azaz, northwest of Aleppo. It's been reported by a Turkish news agency today. Witnesses say the blast in the rebel-held city went off near a courthouse there. It seems dozens more were reportedly injured as well. There are pictures we got in. Now that development comes amid a nationwide ceasefire in Syria. On Friday, Russia's defense ministry announced it started withdrawing its armed forces from Syria after it says successfully completing its mission there. Turkey is considering shutting off access to the country's southern Inkilik air base. It says this is due to a lack of NATO support in Ankara's military campaign in the Middle East. The US has led allies, including Kurdish militias, in fighting Islamic State and has used Inkilik as a launch point for airstrikes. Turkey, meanwhile, regards Kurdish fighters as terrorists. Ankara says the US chooses terrorists over allies when it supplies arms to Kurdish forces. Inkalik Air Base was already shut off once for suspected connections with the attempted coup back in July last year. Donald Trump appears committed to mending relations between the U.S. and Russia. The president-elect wrote Saturday on Twitter that we have enough problems around the world and that he hopes both countries will work together during his presidency to solve problems. His comments come only a day after the U.S. government released a report on the Russian hacking allegations. Right now, relations between the two countries are a bit tense. In late December, President Barack Obama issued an executive order sanctioning Russia for suspected election interference and other cyber attacks. Trump has said he's committed to repairing ties with Russia on multiple occasions, which isn't exactly rare for an incoming president. When President Barack Obama took office, the administration hit the reset button on Russia. It hoped to reverse the apparent drift between the two world powers. Before that, President George W. Bush and his administration also pledged to foster good relations. Trump hasn't said exactly how his administration plans to restore the U.S.-Russian relationship, but current Secretary of State John Kerry said he sees an opportunity for the president-elect to reach out and find some common ground. And now Israel has cut about $6 million in funding to the United Nations. Why? Over the Security Council's recent resolution against Israeli settlements. Cutback is the first retaliatory measure now by Israel to show its discontent with that resolution. The Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danan, says that it's unreasonable for Israel to fund bodies that operate against it. Now, Israel annually contributes some $40 million to the United Nations. The announcement comes just a day after the U.S. House of Representatives unanimously condemned the UN resolution and criticized President Barack Obama for refusing to veto it. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen will make stops in Houston and San Francisco while traveling to visit allies in Latin America. A presidential spokesman says Tsai is due to arrive in Houston on January 7th, leaving the following day. During her return trip, Tsai is scheduled to land in San Francisco on January 13th. 
The American stopovers will be made despite China's requests that the U.S. disallow such a visit based on its one China policy, which declares Taiwan is part of China and only the government in Beijing should be recognized. According to the L.A. Times, Tsai recently said, quote, the outside world has a lot of imagination regarding my transit stops, adding transit is just transit. But Tsai has not ruled out any potential meetings during her U.S. stopovers. Political observers note that any meetings with President-elect Donald Trump's camp would anger Beijing. On Saturday, the United States is warning its citizens against visiting Gambia as part of their tourist destinations. The U.S. warns anyone considering to travel there about the risk of a civil unrest after President Yahya Jame is making several challenges despite losing an election. In a statement on the website of U.S. Department of State, it said that the U.S. Department of State warns U.S. citizens against travel to the Gambia because of the potential for civil unrest and violence in the near future. Jame is challenging his elected rival, Adama Barrow, claiming Barrow was a potential flashpoint for violence. According to Mexican authorities, on Saturday, an American consular official was shot in Guadalajara, Mexico, but is now in stable condition. The incident occurred Friday evening. Mexican federal and state officials are investigating the attack. Guadalajara is a city in the restive western state of Jalisco. Jalisco is a main facet of the Mexican economy, but the state's southern border became a battleground between the Jalisco New Generation Cartel and the Michoacan-based Knights Templar. In May 2015, Jalisco New Generation gunmen shot down an army helicopter in southwestern Jalisco, killing six military personnel. Death toll in protests and looting over a rise in the prices of gas in Mexico has risen to six. Authorities have confirmed that two people have died in a confrontation between protesters and police in the central state of Hidalgo. There were four previous deaths in incidents over the past few days. Officials say some 300 stores have been looted and more than 1,000 people have been detained over the violence. Mexicans have been left outraged after authorities raised fuel prices on January 1st. The government says the rise is a necessary measure as part of a deregulation strategy of the energy sector. Security remains tight at the Fort Lauderdale airport as flights resume on Saturday. A day after officials say 26-year-old suspect Esteban Santiago shot and killed five people. Passengers stranded as a result of the shooting have returned to the airport, many recalling the moments the gunshots rang out. All I remember doing is running out the door through the uh, security. Everybody was trampling each other. Terrence Riva is now waiting for his luggage, left behind in the aftermath. It was complete chaos, a mess. Uh, people scared for their lives. The attack wounded six others, and several dozen more were taken to area hospitals, with injuries suffered in the chaos that ensued as passengers fled for their lives. The terminal where the attack took place remains closed. Traveler Joanne Sutherland says she's not sure when she'll be able to fly home to Canada. I'm hoping to get a flight out of Miami on Wednesday night, uh, afternoon. And until then, what are you going to do? They said there's just no hotel rooms available anywhere. I'm going to be right here. Here in the terminal with many others trying to get home safely. Ten-year-old boy has been growing his hair for two years, all to help out a friend. Tyler Boone and 12-year-old Gabby Ruiz met two years ago at a family event in Florida. Tyler noticed that Gabby didn't have hair and wasn't playing with the other kids. When he learned she has medical conditions, including alopecia, an autoimmune disease that causes hair loss, he thought of a unique way to help her. Since he could grow hair, Tyler wanted to grow some for Gabby. So he's gone without a haircut for the past two years to make a wig for his friend. A photo shoot of two friends, Tyler Boone and Gabby Ruiz. I look and be like, oh. really? You may be able to oh, see no. where the story's going. A lot of people always say, You're I'm a girl. Yeah. No. Don't like that, do you? I kind of got used to it. Mistaken for a girl too many times to count because the boy with a big heart has been growing his hair for two years. I'm cutting my hair so I can give it to Gabby. So, 
just want to make her happy. And Gabby, the girl with a perfect smile and bright eyes, has alopecia, a hair loss disorder. You can't get too much out of her, though. She's shy. I don't know. But she got the honor of cutting Tyler's 12 inches of hair. Was it hard to cut? Yeah. The two then went side by side over to the salon. I guess we're just following her. Where Tyler got to pick a new do. If the spike doesn't work, I'm gonna bust it. His hair going to a nonprofit, children with hair loss, to make a wig for Gabby. After 30 minutes of buzzing, shaving, and cutting, with Gabby looking on. It's cool. Tyler looks like a whole new kid. My feels so different. But he's still the same generous boy. He's a great person and it's amazing. But the truth is, they're both amazing. And maybe we can all learn something about giving from them. <laughs>